I think everybody needs a break from studying. So in this video, I'm going to help you figure out how you're supposed to choose the best medical specialty for you. I was really motivated to make this video because I've noticed I'm getting a lot of emails from people asking, how am I supposed to figure out what the best medical specialty for me really is? And I thought about it and it's a really good question because in medical school, you're really only being exposed to a very small sliver of all of these different medical specialties. And the thought that you're going to base your entire life's career and write the trajectory of what your life is going to be like in terms of your work environment, how much money you make, who you work with, the type of medical work that you do, for all of that to be based on such a limited, narrow exposure to these different medical specialties while you're a student is like kind of crazy. So I want to walk you through how I think you should think about these different specialties. Maybe my goal is to make you think about something that perhaps you haven't already thought of. So the first thing that you need to think about are what are your interests? And this, in, this really requires you to look inward because if you don't know what it is that you're interested in doing throughout your career, it's really difficult to make a good decision. So let's say that you're interested in research. There are different fields that you can do clinical research in, which is pretty much any medical specialty. But if you wanna be a bench researcher and do that basic science research that maybe you saw in your undergrad years, then there are certain medical specialties that are more amenable to that. Things like oncology and the surgical specialties and pathology are probably good choices for someone that wants to do basic science research. Any specialty can do clinical research. So if you wanna be a clinical researcher, you're not really limited. Are you interested in business and entrepreneurship? If you see yourself in the future possibly opening up your own practice and being your own boss, then maybe you wanna think about specialties like dermatology, psychiatry, pain, family medicine, or ophthalmology. Now, certainly this is not an all-inclusive list. Technically, any medical specialty can always open their own practice, but these are the ones where it's much more realistic because you have less overhead, and therefore it's easier for you to just open up your own practice. You could imagine for a second that if you're in a field like neurosurgery, you can't really just on a whim, open up your own practice because there is such an expense and such an overhead that goes into doing that. And understanding the economics of medicine helps us better understand why there are certain specialties that exist more in large groups and are hospital employed, as opposed to something like pain medicine, which is much easier to just open up your own practice. Now, what if your interest is just being like the really sexy TV doctor that you probably think about when you think about prestige. And if that's what you're interested in, then good for you. If that's what you want, you're probably better off going into one of those fields that to the average person or to the lay person sounds sexier on paper. And no judgment here. If that's what you're interested in, then maybe you should consider those highly competitive surgical fields like ENT, urology, neurosurgery, radiation oncology, interventional cardiology, or ortho. Again, not an all-inclusive list. I think that any medical specialty can sound really sexy on paper depending on what it is that you do within your field, but these are the ones that the average Joe will look at and be like, oh my god, like you do surgery on people's brains? Whoa! Now the next thing you want to think about is what kind of environment do you actually want to work in? And this is something that a lot of medical students have trouble with because again, they're only seeing such a narrow view of these specialties when they're students. If you want to work in a hospital in an inpatient setting, you can really choose any specialty because within all of the various medical specialties, there's obviously always an opportunity to work within a hospital system. And economically, this is really the trajectory that medicine in the United States has been shifting towards. A lot of outpatient practices are being bought up by big health systems, and there's the corporatization of medicine, which is leading more people to go into hospital and inpatient settings because a lot of physicians are a lot more risk averse and wanna just accept a paycheck as an employee. But what if you're interested in private practice? If you're interested in private practice, this opens up a lot of doors. You could do something like family medicine, GI, cardiology, general internal medicine or primary care, psych, ophthalmology, rheumatology, neurology, pain, physical medicine and rehabilitation, and a bunch of the internal medicine subspecialties like endocrinology, 
nephrology, it's not shown on this slide, but rheumatology, allergy, there are a lot of different options here. But again, keep in mind that understanding if you wanna be in a busy hospital versus in an outpatient private practice kind of setup, that will dictate what sort of specialty is available to you because some specialties require that you work within a hospital. And lastly, what if you want a hybrid setup? What, do you want to, what if you wanna do both? Maybe you wanna be in the hospital in the morning, but be in the outpatient in the afternoon. A lot of different specialties are amenable to this, especially surgical specialties. So a lot of surgeons will go to the OR in the morning, they'll do their surgical cases, and then they'll go to the clinic, their outpatient, you know, private practice kind of setup, and they'll see other patients coming in for outpatient matters in the afternoon. Internal medicine is good at this, neurology is good for this, really anything academic. So if you wanna teach, if you wanna be a part of a residency program, you can set up your schedule where in the morning you'll be in the hospital, in the afternoon you'll be in the clinic because a lot of hospitals and teaching hospitals specifically, they have outpatient locations attached to the hospital and a lot of the faculty that teach in various residency programs have that sort of setup. Now I think the most important thing in this whole video is this step number three, knowing your limitations. And this requires you to admit what you're weak in and what you don't wanna do and what makes you feel uncomfortable. So when you think about all these different surgical specialties, I mean, the honest question is, can you handle surgery? Can you handle looking at blood and gore and cutting into people? Can you handle standing for long periods of time, not urinating for hours on end? How long can you go on an empty stomach? These things all matter if you're considering going into surgery or a surgical specialty because this is what's going to be required of you throughout your life. Uh, are you a glass half empty kind of person? For a long time, certain medical specialties like anesthesiology have really been complaining and felt threatened by mid-level encroachment. So do you feel, are you one of those people that are gonna feel constantly negative and constantly threatened by normal economic pressure? If this is you, then maybe you don't want to, maybe you shouldn't be an anesthesiologist. People have been complaining about nurse anesthetists for so long and wondering whether or not they're going to lose their jobs in this field hasn't really come to fruition yet. But nonetheless, if you're one of those people that is constantly going to worry about your job security, then certain fields like this one may not be ideal for you. Do you like working with children? And more importantly, do you mind working with their parents? If you don't like children, pediatrics is definitely not for you. Can you communicate with children? Surprisingly, lots of medical students have a really tough time doing this. When you go into medical school, you're not old enough and oftentimes not even mature enough to communicate effectively with toddlers. And if that's you, then pediatrics is definitely off limits. Another really important thing is knowing your financial situation. And I wanna pause for a second because there's a lot of bad advice out there that says something like, if you're only interested in the money, then go into a different field. And I think that is absolute garbage advice. Medicine is an amazing field where yes, you help people and yes, you need to display empathy and put your humanistic qualities first, but it's still a job, which means money's important and you deserve to be financially free while being able to help people because if you can't help yourself, you can't help other people. And with that, in, with that in mind, you really need to understand your financial situation. How many student loans do you have? How much money do you need to make to be happy? And so if you don't care how much money you need to make, you can really do any specialty. There's nothing that's off limits. If you know your rich grandfather paid for medical school, then great, you should do any specialty that makes you feel the happiest. But what if you need to make above average money? Then things like anesthesiology, any surgical field, GI, cardiology, rheumatology, pain, optho, uh, psych, emergency medicine, these are all really good choices. But if you need to make above average money, and when I say above average, I mean compared to other physicians, not compared to the average earnings of someone in the United States, then things like pediatrics, family med, endo, nephrology, infectious disease, allergy, and general internal medicine slash primary care, those, those are probably off limits. They don't make above average. They actually make below the average physician. Now to be clear, any physician is still gonna make more money in the US than non-physicians. So if, if again, if money doesn't matter to you, then pick whatever makes you happiest. But if you're coming into residency with $500,000 in student loans, then I would advise against picking something like pediatrics. 
And if you just want to make a boatload of money, then obviously think about things like dermatology, neurosurgery, orthopedics, interventional cardiology. And I wrote other with an asterisk. And the reason I did that is because if you are a go-getter and you're entrepreneurial, you can turn any medical specialty into a gold mine, depending on how innovative you are and how much of an entrepreneur you are. So don't feel like certain specialties will not allow you to make a boatload of money. For the right person, any medical specialty can truly be turned into a thriving opportunity.